This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And tonight's guest is Spinnerin. Hello. Before we get into the show, I actually want to talk about something serious for just a moment. Last Sunday, at the wee wee hours of the morning. Um, well, you need to give a little background. So okay. Your blogging community. In my blogging community, not in my Portland community, but in my blogging community is just like kind of a which life Which is far blogger, and wide. Which is far and wide across the world. Um, there's a guy named Travis who lives in Texas and writes a blog, and he's a very touching individual. What's the name of his blog? Uh, you don't remember. You just, why do you ask me these things when I've had a martini? Yeah. Um, one rung, one word, one day, I believe is the name of okay. his blog. But it's Travis Irwin. And... He writes about his life. He writes about his kids, and he writes about his community. And I don't always comment on his blog, but I go back to his blog again and again because he's a very powerful writer, and he seems like a really good person. It's one of those examples where you get involved in someone's blog and you feel like you're touched by their life even though you've never met them. And Travis very much falls into that um, role. On Sunday morning, his house burned to the ground. Uh, his, his everyone's fine. Luckily, his sons were. I think his, his family mom's. is okay. His family's fine. His dogs are fine. Um, but his house is gone, and it's very upsetting. Uh, and I just wanted to anyone who's interested in helping, anyone who knows who Travis is, can go to habitatfortravis.blogspot.com to see if there's anything that they can do to help. Uh, it's a good man with a good family, and it's it's really horrible that that happened. Is, yeah, and we'll we'll post the link uh, in the uh, we'll post the link in yeah. the in the blog post for the episode. And yep. now that we've talked about something really horribly depressing, <clears throat> let's talk about something else. But also, <laughs> okay, because the family's okay. The family that's, is okay. Everyone the, is fine. Yeah. Everyone is fine, and luckily for them, his his sons were not home to deal with the okay fright so all good but if you can do something to help out the family please do so uh, now on to something else let's talk about and now for something completely <laughs> now different for something eggplants. completely different so how did eggplants become just your go-to word uh this is really silly <laughs> so <laughs> that was silly um so i'd had i'm trying to think of a concise way to tell this I'd had eggplant parmesan um, the week of a conversation where I was talking to friends about same-sex marriage and how I and I felt like the whole government controlling marriage thing was stupid anyhow. And I said, you yes. know what? They should just rename it. We can all get eggplant parmesan. Mm, and it kind delicious. of stuck in my head after that of eggplant is just sort of like this default union. noun verb thing that you do. Yeah. How do you like, you now, speaking of real eggplant instead of an eggplant union, <laughs> so, what, what, how do you like your eggplant? The horrible thing is I don't like eggplant that you much. don't? <laughs> no. I, I have to, I, I don't. feel compelled to is make. Is this all a euphemism or? <laughs> no, no, I feel compelled. about the same thing? I feel compelled to make eggplant for you sometime. I'm going to have okay. to have you come over. My favorite eggplant dish is the dish that my dad would make. He would take the um, eggplant and you slice it. Uh, maybe a, a quarter of an inch thick at the mm-hmm. most, and then you sweat it. Okay. And then you um, brush it with olive oil and sprinkle um, dried hot chili peppers over it mm-hmm. and grill it. Okay. It's the most beautiful thing. I have had thing. good grilled eggplant. I just, Ugh. I've had so much You know, bad I've had eggplant. a lot of bad eggplant. Yeah. I won't, see, that's, the, I like most vegetables. I'll even eat Brussels sprouts if they're done mm-hmm. properly. Uh, almost any vegetable I will eat if it's done properly. Can you? I'm trying to think of a vegetable. Is there a vegetable you really don't like? Eggplant? <laughs> Aside <laughs> well, from eggplant. you know, I, I don't hate it. I just, 
if there's three things on the menu, I'll skip the eggplant and get yeah. something else. I don't. Uh, I don't. No, order it, I don't have a lot of. No, Lucas, my boyfriend, will totally laugh at this because I'm mm-hmm. sure he thinks that I do have food pickiness things. <laughs> but I, I don't feel like I have a lot of foods that I just wouldn't. But you're a foodie, so you just want touch. the food to be good. Yes, it has to be good. Which is not picky. Yeah. That's, well, that's my theory. That's taste. <laughs> I'm with you. Dr. Normal, are there any vegetables that you seek to avoid? Uh, none that come to mind right now. I used to really hate Brussels sprouts. I used to just think Brussels sprouts were the most they're horrible thing. They're another one of those that you get cooked so But it's just because they're cooked But badly. if you grill them properly and everything, they can yeah. be really... Just about anything's good grilled, though. It's oh, those... Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's that leafy thing that you guys like to eat sometimes, the, the artichokes. Oh, yeah. You're not a big artichoke fan. Yeah, right? just, yeah, know, you think they're whatever. boring. Yeah, I like Too much artichoke. work. Too much yeah. work. Yeah, but a crab is a lot of work, and you love crab. Yeah. Right. Crab is a lot of work. But it's crab. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's makes just, it sort it's of... Too much work. Crab yeah. or yeah, artichoke? You just, you know, artichoke. You know, too much work for not enough pleasure. I don't know. Okay. With the artichoke. <clears throat> yeah, I like artichoke. Back to eggplants. No. <laughs> So, so, well, I want to talk about food. I know. You can talk about gonna... other stuff later. You have a food question? You made it address. No, go ahead. I was going to ask about the bread. You, no, yeah, yeah, that's t- on the top of the list. Is Betsy bread. says you got her started on sourdough. Yeah. Talk to me about sourdough. Uh, sourdough. I, I've only so, ever baked one kind of real bread, mm-hmm. and I'm itching to bake more bread. All right, so the bread that you made had yeast in a packet? Yes. No, no, no. We in buy the, with the jar of yeast. Okay. But that, so it's like a particular strain of yeast that they make in the laboratory? Yes. Well, there are yeasts on all sorts of things. Yes. Right? On grapes and on grains and lots of kinds of things. Yes. So um, you can, uh, the sourdough is really just a process of letting those natural yeasts come out and leaven the bread. And really you just have to neglect it in an appropriate manner. <laughs> so where do you get so the yeast from? It's already on the grain. If you buy, if you buy like a high quality, uh, organic wheat flour, organic unbleached wheat flour, then um, it already is going to have that yeast on it. It's not been over processed. This is actually a matter of quite a bit of contention. Oh my you god, know, I'm whether getting it's... a little scared. But I want to know. <laughs> no, it, it, but it, it's totally safe. Uh, it's so... not about safety. It's about complete failure. No, so the great thing is that you can just wait longer, or you can try it again, or you can say, hey, Audrey, give me some of your sourdough starter. <laughs> Although mine is really sour right now. It's mm-hmm. sourer than I like, so I need to figure out how to... Um, I've had a few people offer better. me sourdough starter, but yeah, I but am doing it totally from scratch, to do it myself. Really, you make flour and water paste in the right proportions, and then you let it sit, and you let it sit, and you let it sit, and just when you've gone, oh, it's not going to bubble, it's never going to bubble, if it finally does. Where do you let it sit? Yeah. Like in your kitchen, someplace kind of... On the counter? Warm. Yeah. As long as the cats don't get into it. No, counter's good. Do you you yeah. can cover it, can't you? Yeah, you cover it. Um, so the whole... Because uh, my cats would totally Like, is the yeast in the air or is it the yeast in the um, in the grain debate matters because do you put cheesecloth over it or do you put plastic wrap on it? Do you need the air to get in or no? What do you do? I think I did cheesecloth. <laughs> Just to, you know, kind of... Make sure whichever turned out to be the case, there would be some yeast access there. Well, because then you so. bake it and it would kill any bad. Well, and that's the thing. Leaves. So um, if you have a healthy sourdough culture, bad stuff can't grow in it. Mm-hmm. The pH is wrong. It's got all the wrong nutrients. It's not going to work. So it's kind of a, a controlled rotting that you allow to happen. Well, you know, uh, yeah. controlled no, fermentation, right? It is. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if it if it smells good, if it... Well, good. It, it's, I mean, it smells kind of funky, yeah. but a particular kind of funky. So if it smells Sound and looks funky. Mm-hmm, like you expect, then you are safe. You are good to go. How did you get start started? Yes. How did you get started making bread? So my mom made bread when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was, for most of my childhood and adolescence, a complete failure in the kitchen. Mm. But bread was one of the things that... Yeah, so my mom actually really did not believe I would ever learn to cook. She was convinced that anybody who burned rice was just not. See, I can cook. I've been able to cook my whole life, but I cannot bake. If I try to even bake cookies. They just don't come out the way you I expect. call my mom and I'm like, mom, could you please help me what to do? Turn the oven on. No, no, just turn the oven on, Cammie. Yeah. It, yeah. You follow directions exactly and then you experiment. Correct. And, so, and I've gotten there now yeah. recently. All of a sudden I can make but banana bread. I think bread. it's mental. You know, it's, it's not just uh, like do the, I don't know, the goblins interfere See, with the process. I thought it was like a... It's like a yeah. folding sheets thing, and maybe <laughs> some of you can follow with me. When I was in my teens and early 20s living on my own, I could not fold my sheets. 
They flat, just wouldn't come out. The flat sheets I uh-huh. could fold, but the fitted sheets, mm. you've got to know the trick. And suddenly, I was, it was right before I met Mike, I learned how to fold the fitted sheets. And then I met Mike, and I was like, well, maybe I was <laughs> ready for an adult relationship there you because go. I learned how to you can fold do the, the sheets. <laughs> And now I'm like, well, maybe I'm ready, baby, because I've had an adult relationship, I'm ready to make bread. Mm-hmm. I yeah. made a cake that turned out as well. Cool. So tell me more about this baking. This did you enter the pie off? Yes, I did. How I did made you? peach hand pies. Mm-hmm. They were okay. The, I mean, they were good. The pocket but they pies? Weren't, yeah. But they weren't, like, mind-blowingly good. They were just I saw two sets of pocket pies, so mm-hmm. yours and uh, Media Chick made the other mm-hmm. pocket pies. Yeah, she I, did apple. I thought that the pocket pies was a bold move. Yeah, it was tasty. I prefer pocket pies myself. Yeah, I you know, I'd never done that before. I'd actually never made the recipe that I entered in the pie-off before the mm-hmm. pie-off, um, which is a great way to force yourself to learn stuff, yeah. you know? Seriously, you think, oh, well, I guess I'm doing it for the competition then. Mm-hmm. All right, then. I will know how to tap dance by Thursday. Um, and <laughs> <Did I? laughs> Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, but no, it, it worked out really nicely. And I definitely want to try making pocket pies with all sorts of things now, especially, you know, getting into spring, summer when there's mm-hmm. a lot of fruit. Do you think there'll be another pie off? I hope so. There better be. If there's a pie off, yeah, I'm going to enter it. You should. And you absolutely should. And you should do like a, a type of pie that you've never done before. Mm-hmm. Like practice it once oh, yeah. maybe, but then. The only, totally. I've only ever made two kinds of pie in my entire life. Oh, then that'll be easy. Chicken pot pie, which uh-huh. I make from scratch all the time. And I think you're the one that um, sent me the link for maybe. the whole wheat pie crust. Yes. I yes. still haven't made it. I just decided that <laughs> if I make chicken pot pie. Then it's okay. I can have regular pie crust. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to, I'm planning to make it at some point. I got a little gung ho there at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I only ever made the chicken pot pie, and then my my aunt Linda's lemonade pie. Oh, nice! And that's a graham cracker crust, and graham cracker crust does not count. Mm. All right. I might try to make a lemon meringue pie. That's one of my favorites too, but I I never get the meringue to quite. I mean, but it's like you know, it, it leaks. Uh, yeah, but, but it tastes good. I Who love cares? it's my favorite pie, and I usually go for flavor over appearance. Me too. So yeah, you know. It's my my brother's totally the opposite. He did enough professional cooking. Mm. Well, not the opposite. I mean, he yeah. cares about the flavor, but you right. know what I mean. Like it has he wants to, it look to look right. pretty. And yeah, I I just kind of shrug. <laughs> yeah. See, my favorite meals are things like I like gumbo and mm-hmm. and um, Mike makes a great paella. Mm-hmm. I I like foods that are more rustic and yeah. and just comforting and wonderful so and they don't necessarily look the and let's prettiest. face it chicken pot pie is not the prettiest thing the no life. so um <laughs> we did a, a family cookbook for christmas my uh-huh. brother and i and there there were a couple things that were just kind of hard to photograph the mac and cheese oh yeah and, you know it, it it looks like mac and cheese yeah but and uh the turkey pot pie you know he he did a great job with the, the photograph like in terms of composition and angle and everything but it's still a pot pie it's still and, a pot pie yeah um, another friend of mine was just talking about how she was going to give us the casserole recipe, but not a photograph mm-hmm. because it just wasn't fair to the casserole. <laughs> it's not. You know? Casseroles are delicious it's, and tasty. And, yeah, and they, just not photogenic. Ugly. So I'm kind of curious if anybody's got like a, a trick to make them suddenly photogenic. Because I like doing food photography a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jello. Jello is seriously photogenic. Jello is very photogenic. <laughs> it may be weird to eat, but it's photogenic. I don't like Jello <laughs> at all. But, but I you love should make someone take pictures, pictures of it because it's, it's a, a really yeah. Yeah, I have these my favorite photos that I took that are just a photo of something was I was working with different I wanted to make candy flavored liquor. I wanted mm. to like take vodkas and gins and dissolve candy in them. And I don't know why I had this sudden urge to do this a month of me dissolving candy in booze. <laughs> and my favorite one This doesn't sound like a bad thing. It wasn't. It was fantastic. Maybe I should do it again. Yeah. I found that vodka and Skittles makes the most beautiful and oh. in some cases if you use the right colored skittles mm-hmm. um very very all of them together shots. could be kind of a weird correct the flavor. lime the lime skittles made the prettiest and tastiest the orange skittles were also very tasty uh-huh. in the vodka but you had to let them dissolve for a while i've heard i think jolly ranchers are another one people do like jolly ranchers and vodka dissolve and you I get bright that. color I, yeah you'd have to let that dissolve for a while probably yeah with the- i don't know i did cranberry orange vodka which no candy but it, it worked yeah. really well and it came out uh surprisingly sweet i thought it was going to be really bitter like cranberry juice and- yeah on to more food awesome. things yeah. are you going to be at master bacon i'm not Aww. no i'm going to skip it <laughs> mm. yeah i'm not going to say anything to encourage any particular food 
genre because I get to judge some of the funky categories. Oh. But oh my goodness, I'm looking forward to Master Bacon. <laughs> I think it's next. It's a week from Saturday. You use some it? kind of a candied bacon. There's going to be some Skittles. good stuff. There's going to be. Uh, I, I'm sure there will I'm be. Sure there's no, gonna I'm sure there's going to be. I'm some, looking forward to hearing about it. <laughs> some grotesque stuff too. But I'm very excited. Doctor Normal has like all these schemes for it, but he won't tell me anything that he has cooked up. He's mm-hmm. trying to keep it all from me. I'm thinking I might have to leave early in the morning before Master Bacon, so, so that, that he has food prep space. And correct. Just, yeah. So that I don't have to be there because he doesn't want me to know what he's doing. Well, that wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair, even though I'm not judging for grand prize. Still. Wouldn't be fair. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if I go, if I go on the uh, um, worst bacon pairing or some other really nice thing. I'm, so I'm does torn. worst mean truly worst or sort of worst best? Like I can't believe I'm eating this, but it's really good. Um, no, I think it means worst. Yeah, you to just, me, it's, to me, it's worst. Oh no, you should never. Because because yeah. okay. <laughs> my, my serious entry would be probably. Oh, uh, I can't believe me. I'm eating this. But it's cool. It's so, and I had a hard time trying to figure out something that goes really bad with bacon. Mm-hmm. But I figured it out. You can think of. I don't. Just don't tell me. Maybe. You no, can I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell gonna anybody. Well, obviously, eggplants out. I, I think figured it out. Oh, would probably eggplant work. would be good. Yeah. And so. it was so obvious. I was driving home one night from work, and I was. Um, no, that would actually be really good. No, that. Oh, I could make that work. No, that would be good. That would. Do, that's it. That's the one. It was That's the perfect what doesn't thing. Go he got home and he had this like horrified and excited look <laughs> on his face, and he was like, "I can't tell you, but I know exactly the most horrible pairing for bacon in the world." Just yeah, like, you know what? <laughs> Law Duck in the chat room just said prunes. Apparently, he didn't try the bacon wrap oh. dates. Oh. Uh huh. Oh, JP. From the Vidu, um <laughs> lunch two point stuffed with blue cheese That's and right. wrapped with bacon. So, so, yes, there's uh, anything. Uh, Take your fingers out of the mouth. Sorry, I I'm just... <laughs> um, I've had dreams about those dates. Yeah. You've been listening to the podcast. What? That's a quote from your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I still have the dreams. And in leading up to Master Bacon, yes, I've yes. been having all these bacon dreams. And I'm not going to reveal anyway. my favorite bacon dish of, of history because I don't want it sway anybody but dr normal knows what it is so the is. problem is i, oh. I want to make something nice but the but the the bad pairing i really because if, if no if one an idea you're excited about if it, no then, one wants yeah. to if no one will do it i'll be crushed that it's not there because it will truly be the bad bacon is it, pairing is it because you want to see uh verso and kavitin and i eat something that truly i horrifying? want to see everyone just look at and go no, <laughs> that is when, not. I'm just not looking. <laughs> exactly, that's not where bacon goes. So yeah, so we'll see. Good we'll see times. what happens. Good times. For those of you that don't know, Master Bacon is next Saturday. I don't. I don't know what that date is, but it's so next Saturday, not tomorrow. So for the rest next tomorrow. of the half hour on Strange Love Life, we'll be. I don't know. Let's fire up Calligator and see what we've got. Right? It's like we'll be like bacon. It's a lot of stuff going on. There yeah. is a lot of stuff going Especially on. Especially in January. Especially in January. Yes. Master Bacon a week from tomorrow. And then everybody decided to start a new user group. I don't know if you noticed, but there's... like, So we had user groups, and then yeah. there are three new ones in the last two weeks that I've heard about, and it's just... And apparently this is the year. Because the world is coming to an end, Beer and Blog is happening on a Saturday now. I mean, they had Beer and Blog today, but now Beer and Blog is also having, having. a thing tomorrow. It's expanding. Yes, they're branching I don't think that's the world out. coming to... It's taking over. Yes, maybe yeah. it's not coming to an end. Maybe... Well, no, it's coming... It's You're gonna, a beer it's and blogless It's going to crush the world. It's going to crush the world and then, yeah. like, build it up and dominate it. Yes. Um, so, no, but if you don't have a blog, you should go to Cube Space tomorrow between noon and five. And it's... And do we mention you. it's put on by the beer and blog people? I don't, so I don't think... I've ever... I don't think we've ever discussed beer and blog on the I show I mean, it's before. not It's not going to be do like... Do you know anybody that yes, works on beer and blog? About, I'm just saying. It's not going to be like... Blog. It's like tech and drinking. Just mm-hmm. like what you do with Caligator, right? It sounds like something that we but might... But we do tech, mm. then we drink. Oh. Oh, you don't drink and then do tech? Not usually. Uh, there's not sort of effective. And so I, every programmer I've asked about this has like a different threshold for when you can start drinking beer and still write code Mm -hmm. um but for me it's yeah not a good thing unless i am like writing one last line and then i think i gave up any chance for ever drinking code when i gave up soda okay i'm serious Uh, drinking code writing code we talked about your code writing it's which is not bad i mean you start doing html and you're like (laughs) it's like even though you can do it if you want to 
anyway. I used to, but yeah. no, now. Uh-uh. You go for a few years, and then you're like, what? Are, are you speaking Portuguese to me? I don't there understand There are many you. fine tutorials online. Yeah, I don't think I need to go back to that place. It wasn't a happy place. So, no, I want to talk more about food. Um, back to the food? I want to talk more. I have Audrey on the show. She's just explained can, can briefly you, can how you to relate make a sourdough how, starter. Take any given program language, like C, C++, and relate it to a food. <laughs> no. And do the hierarchy. No, no, no. <laughs> Not even going to try. So Ruby on Rails would be mm, <laughs> cake. I don't know. I like uh, cake. That could mm. be somebody else's competition. Like <laughs> for your bacon, you will answer. <laughs> It'll be tech bacon jeopardy. Yes. Um, what's your favorite kind of food? I know it's a very Ooh. difficult question. Probably bread products. Bread products? Yeah. Mm, I love bread products. There's a lot you can do with bread products. There is. I would have to say vegetables. I love vegetables. But I don't, I'm not like a, ooh, crunchy, crunchy, Mm -hmm. dip my vegetables in raw. I like them grilled and I like them foil pouched and I like Mm -hmm. them, I like, I like vegetables and steak. I have to work on the vegetables. And bread. I really. <laughs> I buy things that'll rot if I don't eat them, and so that you'll eat them, or yeah. the, do they just rot? Uh, getting better on the eating them. Yeah. Gardening's perfect that way, food gardening, because mm-hmm. then you just leave it in the ground until Correct. you're ready to eat it. And oh. so the the lettuce salad problem goes away Correct. because you have lettuce, or the slugs ate it. Correct. But you never have lettuce in the fridge. That's also, going gross. I find if I grew something, mm-hmm. I'm very proud because mm-hmm. I grew this with my own two hands. Yeah. So even if the potatoes are that big. Yeah. <laughs> With the exception, I grew carrots one year, and the carrots were tiny, mm-hmm. and they tasted like wood. Yeah. Carrots, Car- carrots have particular requirements. Yeah, they they're very tough. You have very tough. sandy soil, and you need a lot of water, and yeah. yeah. Let's just say that Cammy's carrot growing was a big failure. Yeah. And I don't think I'm going to be growing carrots again anytime soon. They're trickier. Yeah. Spinach is an easy one. Or if you want something um, that'll take care of itself totally, Swiss chard. I've had reseed itself, so you just have perpetual Swiss chard in your garden, and it shows up in places you didn't know you planted it. Do you know what I expected to be easy was broccoli. I was very gung ho mm. and excited for the broccoli, and the squirrels and the birds ate all of my broccoli. It was I like very mean I planted them. like a quarter of my garden with broccoli because we're big broccoli eaters. <laughs> no, I it like. did not go well. It was very bad. Doctor Normal, time with it. what's your favorite food product? What? Food. What's your favorite food? She food. likes bread. I've decided mine is vegetables, even oh, though I, I can know. never I just like give food. up eating meat. <laughs> I needed to survive. I like I like everything. Yeah. You know, I like the whole thing. I like lots of veggies and all that crap. You know, you could do the yeah. obligatory. My favorite food is bacon. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I don't do that. I don't, I don't. Bacon is popular. I, yeah, I mean, uh, there was sort of an alternate avocado. Actually, I, don't, thing I like going. bacon. I love avocado. <laughs> I like bacon. Like every you know, every yeah. time somebody says bacon, insert avocado instead. Like try to get people to say avocado. Yeah. One of my favorite foods ever, mm-hmm. and this has to do with both bacon and avocado, mm-hmm. is I like to take an avocado and cube it, and a mm-hmm. tomato and cube it, and then like get some bacon really crispy and chop it up, and then put vinegar and olive oil and salt and pepper on it. But that'd be pretty good. It's the most beautiful thing that mm-hmm. <laughs> has ever been eaten on the planet. It can only be made better by a slice of sourdough bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To accompany it. Well, there you go. So mm-hmm. I'm reminded in the chat room not to break into this conversation about food that's been going on for quite some time. Did I eat dinner? The, I did eat dinner. Yeah. The, I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> your Twitter name is Spinnerin. Yeah. And this is because... Because I spin yarn. That's mm-hmm. right. Yes. We have not... Have we talked about no, that? No, we haven't discussed that. Oh, thank God. Because I was away. I was, I was in Tahiti. I was for, saving that for after the food <laughs> talk. I'd gone to Tahiti or Hawaii for a few moments during Strange of Live after hours. So. Bastard. Yeah. With Elmo, I believe. <laughs> Forget and Elmo. the Cookie Monster. And <laughs> in Tahiti. The Veggie Tales was or that, something. Was Slimy the Worm there? Because we all I, know... I have no clue. As we all know, if we're true fans of Strange of Live, Cammy's a big fan of Slimy the Worm. I have no idea. Okay. So, yarn. Spinner and... <laughs> So you yes, spin your own yarn. yarn? Yes, sometimes. From what? Wool, <laughs> which comes off of sheep. Yes, but do you... Human <laughs> hair. <laughs> I, I tried that one, and it doesn't work very well. Skin. Seriously? Um, Did you? Really? Yeah, I tried my, my own hair. Yeah. 
it was it was gross. <laughs> don't do that. That's probably why no, people don't do it. Where do you get the gross. wool? Where do you procure the wool? Uh, so there are a number of these uh, fine flock and fiber festivals where you can go and pet sheep and buy wool. Mm-hmm. You can also on the internet buy buy wool wool prepared for spinning in a variety of colors. So do you buy pre dyed wool? Sometimes. Or do you dye your own wool or do you just yes. buy natural wool? Yes. <laughs> to all of the Tell above. Tell us. Yeah, so um, I, let's see, what do I have currently? I have undyed wool from mm-hmm. a single Shetland sheep that I've been spinning on and off for something like four years. <laughs> and so I will never get a sweater from this because it's just, it goes on and on. And then uh the, I didn't spin probably any yarn all last year mm-hmm. because my cat Sputnik chewed through the drive band on the spinning wheel, and I didn't get around to fixing it for a while. Uh, really? He not a kitty. Things. That's a hungry cat. It's not hungry. Both of our cats have, um, I think it's called Pika, right, where the cat, you know, like cats or people eat non-food objects. Mm-hmm. They so, chew on stuff. Yeah, they chew on stuff, but they'll, mm. like, they eat paper. It's Really? Yeah. Well, Our cats weird. like hamster style, yeah. you know, shred, yeah, yeah. shred, shred. Yes, lucky yes, like respect. hamster style, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Do you still have the hamster? No, <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. It, went home, it went back to school on Monday. Uh, They're rodents, you know. Today, I saw this little girl when I picked up my daughter from school. I saw this little girl out there waiting for a pickup <laughs> with the hamster cage, and I was thinking. <laughs> I hope we get snowed in for a week and you guys get stuck with that hamster. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> hamster was Good just not chance. exciting. No. Good times. It didn't and get eaten by the cats. Well, so the, that's good. That's, we did the well. other problem was she didn't care about the hamster the whole time it was here. Yeah. If I went up to do something, she wouldn't even care. And if I said, let's go see Bubba, <laughs> she would go upstairs and look. And now yeah. that it's gone, she's all, mommy, yeah, no, no, no. can I have a hamster for my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> the hamster that was totally uninteresting when it was here. Yeah. No. And it was always yeah. chewing on its plastic cage. Mm-hmm. And they trying do to, that. Does their teeth grow? And trying to and climb grow, up grow, on its grow. spaceship. It, okay, this hamster had a spaceship. Mm-hmm. And it would try to climb up on the spaceship. And then it would put its two little paws up like human hands and push <laughs> on the lid and try to get out. Nice. I had to put a lead anyway. in glass candle. Yeah. Well, so now the cat just lays up there every morning. I come Hoping upstairs and he's just laying where the cage appear. was. Exactly. Uh, oh, Bubba, come back so I can eat you. So your cats mm-hmm. chew stuff like hamsters. Yeah. They have, they have different paper preferences. Huh, so there's like the, the soft tissue shredding cat, mm-hmm. and then there's the crispy paper shredding cat. Wow. Is that, yeah. I mean, because mostly cats like just tear stuff apart with their um, claws. claws. Yeah, they do that too. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was with getting, their I was claws. The evil look. I have to say, there's two weird quirks going on in the studio this evening. One, I keep doing things that irritate Dr. Normal, so he keeps making funny faces at me and expecting me to understand what he's saying. Because we have a video cast. It takes me a while to figure it out. And two, no matter how Audrey and I position our heads, we still are blocked out by each other's microphones. Yeah, we're still really? looking through the mic. So, yes, yeah, so oh, we're yeah. spending a lot of time. Yeah, it's like, like straight down ooh. the. It's yeah, a it's good like, insider note. Let's talk about the, normally, the show, right? Normally, half of Audrey's face is yeah. covered by the microphone, okay. yeah. and that's not normally a problem. Did you move, reposition the microphones? This not week? necessarily, but that's a that's a good point, though. I mean, I, yeah, I'll I'll fix that. Yeah, I've never you can still this. see her. She's taller than it. Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, no, the yeah, yeah, I'll 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 move the mics around. Yes. Yeah. Didn't so think about we that. Thought, we thought you could go a back good to note. animals. It's a good note to have during the show, so I've got it right there. I'll remember, what do I got to <laughs> do yeah, next Yeah, when you're week? editing, you'll listen to it, and you'll be like, oh. oh I can oh, man, this is when we spent five minutes talking about the you microphones. Gotta, yeah. It's meta. It's yeah. all meta. It's yeah. very meta. Yeah. <laughs> Who'll be on our show um, late in the month. At the end of the month. The last Friday <laughs> John of the month. John Meta. Who do we have? Sorry, we know. Wait, we've got Steph and Aaron, and then we've got... Let's just get drunk. Okay, okay, wait, let's do, let's time? get some Skittle shots. Skittle? Skittle sh- That you, didn't even sound right. <laughs> I was like, whoa. You missed the doing? Skittle shots yeah, okay. portion of the episode. That's, that's a drink, it. right? You're talking a drink. It's that's a not drink a euphemism for something, no, is it? No, we're still Skittle shots? Alcohol. Okay. We're, no, it's something I made. So what are you I drinking, really speaking of what you're drinking? I'm drinking a Dirty Dry Gin Martini with two olives. Really? Original? I mean, who would have ever guessed that I would drink that? And what is Spinnerin drinking? Cran raspberry juice. Because she hit the tiki bar before she came <laughs> oh, over. Oh, did you? Oh, we'll have to talk about <laughs> And that. I didn't have dinner. <laughs> so I'm playing it safe so that we don't get the really, really after hours portion of the show. Was this 
Thatch. She'll say that for next time we yeah, have her on. Thatch. You went to Thatch? Oh, mm-hmm. Still have to go we there. We still need yeah. to go to Thatch. <gasps> yeah, it's fun. We'll talk later. I have I have okay. diabolical plans for going to Thatch. Okay. Great. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. Wonderful. I'm loving all the plans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the execution portion of the plans that... Eh, I like mind. executions as well. No. Okay. I don't. That's not yes, true. Do. I don't really like executions. Uh, it's... I don't. What are you drinking, Doctor Normal? I'm having Spanish, 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 whatever. You're having cava. Cava. I'm so surprised. And this weekend, you know what I'm going to have? Cava. A Spanish coffee made by Cami Chaos. I learned on how to Sunday. make Spanish coffee. I heard every, this. Yeah. Yeah. You made me one. Uh, well, the first one last week. Not so good. <laughs> well, you know, it was beautiful and the flavor was good, but I I used the Huber's recipe in like a six ounce glass and it called for a 10 ounce glass huh? so it was <laughs> 151 and not enough coffee you could pretty much breathe it if you wanted to drink it <laughs> and i don't it think was I, very good i don't think i burned quite enough off but we didn't finish uh, it see. though yes we had like about three sips and so even was, with the coffee it was still flammable oh yeah that kind of yeah yeah it our was, breath I was flammable i had like half of a sip and i was like oh. <sighs> but then we made one later it was good. A little bit better. Your, your father enjoyed it. Mixology, and we finished those. Those were really nice. Well, I do you like? Do you have Spanish coffee? I don't. Yeah. So when they light up, you yeah, know, I've you, had it. I, I don't. So anything much. that's got um, not cream a coffee drink and alcohol tends do you know what I to like? do. I like yeah. a Spanish cocoa. Spanish cocoa. Oh yeah, my 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 friend the bartender will make them for me because I can't have coffee at night. Like a lot of people. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, bouncing and crazy. Right. Yeah, he once made me a Spanish cocoa. And it was very nice. People made fun of me, but I was okay with that. It was that. good. Yeah. It yeah. was very good. Yeah. So I'm making a Spanish coffee this weekend, really? Yeah. I need to get the it one. It was so good. We need the 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take we care of it. We need the slightly we'll take care lower. Of it. Yeah, the <laughs> above 100. Mm-hmm. So you need a whiteboard so you can just cue these things up. Like, oh, exactly. okay, yeah, for later. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, so you went to Thatch? Mm-hmm. What did you drink at that? Yeah. I oh, had... <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> See, we <laughs> ran out of... Turn it back on. Out of music. And Cammy, you say... What did you drink at Thatch? Well, I had a Mai Tai mm. and I had a Chi Chi. A Chi Chi. A Chi Chi. What's the Chi Chi? It comes in a ceramic coconut and it nice. tastes sort of sweet coconutty and I didn't really read the ingredients, so... I'm not like sure. <laughs> that's kind of what happens when you get a good tiki drink. You yeah, don't, you don't need to know you what's in it. Just kind of go. Mm, this tastes good. Okay, and then you're drunk. Did you happen Which... to notice if they had any pineapple or not pineapple specifically? But did you notice they have painkillers? Painkillers. Mm-hmm. This is my I favorite tiki drink, and I used to always get it at what's that place called? Doctor Normal. Um, it's Salvador. Like, Salvador Molly's. Oh. Uh-huh. And then I had to learn how to make it just because the Salvador Molly's in Portland closed. Mm-hmm. There's only one out on the west side now. And oh, yeah. It's too far yeah, to Yeah, it used to be right by me. What's in a yeah, chi-chi? Oh, Belmont. Oh, maybe I should look chi-chi. it up. Chi-chi? Why don't you look it up? Find out. I got you, Dr. You know, Normal. You know, the next John Barra's Dr. Let's Normal album will have a song called Chi-Chi, chi-chi. on it. Uh-huh. So I got Dr. Very Normal cool. this fantastic book um, for Christmas. Show the folks. 10,000 <laughs> <at> drinks. <laughs> Wow. 10,000 like drinks. I like the, the foil the, lettering on yeah, it, too. It's That's fantastic. Great. It's my yeah. Tolstoy. It's the war and yeah. peace of drinks, really. <laughs> so, so really, if it isn't in there, Would you it like doesn't to, exist. No, no, no. Careful. So this is the sad it's, thing. It's heavy. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at it, and, and I get it for him just because he asks <laughs> me to make him drinks, not that he actually makes any of his own. Uh-huh. And so he says, I want a Spanish thing. coffee. So I'm like, fantastic. And I go and I look up Spanish coffee. The first drink I ever look up in Freaking Spanish coffee and ten thousand yeah. damn drinks. This it wasn't filed under coffee, comma Spanish. No, nowhere. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did, nowhere. You, did you check? Coffee, yes, comma Spanish? I did. I checked Spanish coffee and cough, coffee, comma Spanish, and then I checked everything that had the word coffee in it. And then no, no Spanish coffee damn. anywhere in the freaking book. Yeah, nowhere. we're running around with this big well, thick book, and it's like, make me a Spanish coffee. I don't know how to make it. Well, look it up in the 10,000 I couldn't drink remember book. what Ron told me. Ron told it's me not how to make hard, the Spanish coffee, and I couldn't remember. But you just want to check it for reference. So that's yeah, not good. Yeah, I wanted the amounts. I knew the contents. I wanted the amounts. And look how thick that book is. That so you would think they'd have room for 10,000 drinks. Maybe it's under super Portuguese coffee. coffee. 
Triple I, Irish coffee. I must have found the coffee. Oh, yeah, I did find the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to turn to the page that has Spanish coffee. <laughs> Audrey will find the Spanish coffee. Hey, no, it can make chaos. no, no. If I do, then it wasn't in here before, and it's just some like weird Magic. manifestation. No, Thus, we please, reveal that no, the no, chaos family Swedish is a bunch of coffee. morons. No, I know. I found everything <laughs> except for Spanish coffee. Yeah, no, I was I, like, I, God, I, I didn't know there was a freaking Swedish coffee drink. There's like three different kinds Triple of like... Irish. Yeah. There's a Zorro. So, Audrey, you say you program computers and stuff? <laughs> that must be a real smart thing to do. Gee, really? <laughs> Dude, we're talking about booze and food now. I know. So, one of those... And she's finding the Spanish coffee recipe. <laughs> that's I, she didn't find it. No, I didn't. Just oh, wait, Swedish. look. Here's the Spanish <laughs> coffee <laughs> recipe. Yeah, I know. I put it in the freaking book <laughs> so that I'd have it for next time. Yeah. Also, I also... This is when... Oh, this was the day that you were making lentil soup. Well... And oh, I was like, oh, what should I make for dinner? And then I was like, <laughs> lentil soup. Oh, I need to make lentil soup. Which and, a- and which point I called my mom and said, Mom, lentils, I don't have to soak them, right? Because I hadn't made them. What you happens is. You used to make them all the time. I used to make them all the time, but I would then make a humongous batch of it and then freeze it <laughs> so that I didn't have to make it. Mm-hmm. And then you thought. And it's a good it's idea. just good as new. So it had been so long since I made it and I couldn't remember if I had to soak lentils or not. My mom was like, they're tiny. You don't soak them. You just cook them. I said, okay, thank you. And I went and I made my lentils. There's food I like. Lentils. I like lentils. Love lentils. That's what Dr. Normal love had for his Mediterranean. birthday dinner. I love yeah. the whole lentil soup thing. You like, you know what you really like? Well, Germans have a lot of lentil soup. Oh, it's, it's a good thing. Yes. Lentils and wieners. Yes. Wieners in the lentils, actually. You put them, I don't, I was. We put our wieners in the lentils. We do. <laughs> they do. And it's difficult for me. In one version of the lentil soup. When confronted with the, would you like your wiener in the lentil? I have to say, no. That's a direct quote from my family. <laughs> this is a Christmas dinner one year. Would you like your wiener in the lentil? And my dad and my mom were there. And my dad and I are looking at the. <laughs> yeah, your dad. My dad and I are trying so hard this not to laugh. This the one time your dad. The in-laws, everybody... Like, it was the only time that I think my mom and yeah. dad went to your parents' house for Christmas. And yeah, my dad and I were just trying so hard not to laugh. And in the end, we just wound up laughing hysterically yeah. and, and trying so hard to get them to not realize that we were laughing. Laughing at that. <laughs> but what do you get? Yeah. Wiener in the soup. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's very funny. There's no context under which that isn't funny. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, wait. Well, especially, it's not just soup, it's lentils. Lentils, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Normal got lentils for his birthday, mm-hmm. and he was very, very happy. He's like the only guy I know that would be like, yes, make me lentil soup for my birthday. That's fantastic. Cool. Easy. Good thing it's easy. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, fantastic, I'll make you lentils. Yeah. It's New Year's Day, have some lentil soup. Mm-hmm. And somehow we managed to convince our daughter that it was good luck. I realize that's black-eyed peas, but... You could say it's a regional thing, though. Yeah. You know, what if you're not from a black eyed pea part of the country? Then. Yeah, my parents were like, lentils. oh, we're having black eyed peas and uh, I think they ham hocks, but I think they use a smoked turkey wing instead. But mm-hmm. I just don't like black eyed peas. Oh, that's a, that's a, well, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a it's a bean. I don't like black eyed peas. Oh, I don't know if I've had them. This will shock everyone, too. I don't know. You should try them sometime so that you can have an opinion. Yes. Probably should. But, yeah. Yeah, there was a, a while that I was going to India Food World out in Beaverton uh-huh. and getting lentils of all varieties. Mm-hmm. And I ended up with a surplus lentil accumulation <laughs> eventually. So, Well, that's what happened when I saw that you were making the lentils. I was like, oh, I have lentils. I have lentils just sitting there waiting mm-hmm. to be cooked. I need to go get them and cook mm-hmm. them. It was good. What kind of lentils do you like? All lentils. What kind of lentils did you make on New Year's oh, Day? Oh, uh, so those were green lentils, I think. Green or brown. I, you know, I, I forget. I think I made I, a green and brown lentil mix on New Year's Day. Yeah, because I, I just kind of randomly pick. I've never made red lentils. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they cook up less red. Yeah? <laughs> Sadly. More brown? Yeah. Um, but they're really pretty in the jar. They are. They're beautiful in the jar. I could tell. So the exception that with um, the you don't have to soak lentils or they they cook quick anyhow mm-hmm. that I noticed was chana dal which is like a BB garbanzo bean mm-hmm. but it, it looks like a lentil because it in India food world it's sold in the same bags but it's very tight and hard yeah 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 and those don't cook so fast no I had crunchy chana dal at one point that's not good no not good at all so then lentils do you like Thai food 
I have kind of, <laughs> uh, I got overwhelmed on Thai food. Did you eat too much of it? Yeah. Um, so when we were doing all the Ignite planning last year, we mm-hmm. were meeting every week at Isan, and it just got to be too much Thai food for me oh. after a while. So um, I'm kind of still overwhelmed. When I was pregnant, I ate Thai food, and then I got really sick. So I didn't eat Thai food for years. Mm. And and Dr. Norman was very upset because he loves Thai food. He was mm. like, why can't we have Thai food anymore? And then about six months ago, I decided, oh, I can eat Thai food again. And I think he's tired of Thai food now. Because uh. I'm like, um, can you go get me some Thai food now? He's like, can I have anything except Thai food, <laughs> please? Yeah. Yes, I know that you love your curry, but... It's popular in Portland, though. It is. You know, I just... Where I am in, in Southeast Portland, there's probably six Thai restaurants within easy walking distance. Mm-hmm. Just a lot. We have two in yeah. Selwood. Yeah. So, and they're both good. One of them is is much better. Yeah. I find that, though, I don't tend to eat in Thai restaurants. I tend to get takeout. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, that's probably what sustains the six in my immediate vicinity at all. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I tend to get sushi for takeout mm. as well. And Mexican food I tend to get for takeout. Pizza, always takeout. Really, the only thing pizza in my... Pizza is inherently a takeout. It thing. is. But we have pizza cotto, and a lot of people like to eat. Oh, yeah. We either make our own pizza, or we get pizza from pizza cotto. And then, really, the only thing... We go out to eat Greek food. Mm-hmm. But that's because she won't let us have takeout. Yeah, What's the, your Greek place that you go to? Eleni's. Oh, okay. Yeah, she doesn't like to let people yeah. have takeout, because it... Apparently messes with the integrity of the food. <laughs> well, so. it'll get mushier, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's integrity. Like, we in live like that she six means. blocks from. <laughs> how mushy is it going to get yeah. in six blocks? But I don't know. So I, I keep trying to figure out why, especially with the big Greek Orthodox Church over on Gleason, mm-hmm. we don't have more Greek restaurants. Oh, uh, really? Do you why go to don't the Greek we... festival? Yeah, I have oh. not this year. Oh, this man. one, last one. I but... love the Greek festival. It's it's definitely I basically a food. Fest. I don't go to the Greek festival. Yeah. I get the food. To go and right, yeah, but still, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just surprised that there aren't more Greek restaurant cafe something. There's, she has two. She has one down in the Pearl, and then right. The one I've been to the one in the Pearl a yeah. couple years ago. Which apparently she's a lot of fish there, hmm. and not a lot of fish at the Selwood location. Mm-hmm. And then there uh, is the Greek cuisina, and then there's Dimitri's on Burnside. Mm-hmm. Have you been there? No. Fantastic. I, I think I'm saying it right. Off Glamano soup. Oh, okay. Amazing. It's the lemon chicken um, orzo soup. Mm-hmm. Oh, that stuff is so good. We're talking about Greek food, Dr. Normal. Since food is our default topic tonight. I was so yes. excited to have you on so I could make you talk about food. I know yeah. everyone else is probably I very excited. I also like to... Greek food. We could talk more about things that ferment. We could. Oh, yes. We could. Like sourdough bread. Well, and I did. beer. We cheese and... and... Last cheese. year I did cheese. You and made cheese. I did. Yeah. How did Some it of it go? came out better than others. So <laughs> when they say that the the uh, temperature and humidity control are important for aging cheese, mm-hmm. they mean it. It's very important. Yes, I had mold. What kind of mold cheese mold. did you make? I did a cheddar, a gouda, a Monterey Jack, and then uh, mozzarella, which is way easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and because mozzarella you make in liquid. Yeah, you melt it. Yeah, that's what gives it the texture. Yeah. Um, I, I think know. there's something else. How did the gouda turn out? It also went moldy. Mm. What it's turned like, out well? Uh, well, the Monterey Jack I let dry out too much, so it didn't mold. But it, it was sort of like a grating cheese, like Parmesan, mm-hmm. at that point. So that Which was good. good as long as I could grate it, yeah, like physically grate it. Mm-hmm. Um, mozzarella, mozzarella turns out good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I, you know, I, I think I just need to find a cheese cave I can borrow. And what is mm-hmm. the um? Again. What is the? What do you start with with mozzarella? It's another kind of cheese, and then you kind of put it in the water and make it stringy, right? Yeah, what so you're, you're still going through the same process where you make a cheese curd. Um, there's a quick mozzarella where you use acid to curdle the milk. Acid? Uh, yes. She has much food Citric knowledge. Citric acid. I'm envious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, very, a very mild acid. Citric acid. Yeah. You, it, okay. you get it in this powder in a bag. And you measure it out. And Where do you so not like it? hydrochloric acid uh, or LSD. New England Cheese Making Company. Is so you where order I order it. stuff from. Okay. Yeah. The only thing I no order, order food wise online is uh, andouille sausage. And we need to get some soon. Just, yes, we need to order some. <laughs> <laughs> so continue, please. Restock. Uh, oh, so you you curdle. You use either a culture or the acid to curdle the milk, mm-hmm. and then you get curd, and then you take the curd and you strain it. 
And for mozzarella, you make it into a big ball and you put it in the the whey that's left over when mm-hmm. it, it's hot. You can either do that in the microwave, but I don't have a microwave. So I get to do it in the pot where I try to figure out how to not in burn, <laughs> burn myself with it. But so you melt it and you knead it and you melt it and you knead it and eventually you get something that has mozzarella-like texture. So it doesn't have to be in a big ball. You could make it in little balls if you yes, wanted to. Yes, you could. Because I often buy my mozzarella in the little tiny mm-hmm. balls. And that's that's actually pretty easy to make. That's my favorite summer salad. I get the little balls and I serve it with my fresh tomatoes. Right. And so basil. you just need whole milk and they make a kit that's like the mozzarella and ricotta cheese making kit. And you get that in your set. Ricotta, because then I could make lasagna. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I was just, I was, okay, what was I going to ask you about? Hold on. I was, I just said it. I was just going to say, I've been. Oh, uh, I was going to ask her about the microwave. You go, I'll ask her about the microwave. Yes, you can. You're talking about fine cooking and you're going to talk about a microwave? She just said she doesn't have one. I don't. Yeah. Are you afraid that the brain, that the microwaves are going to zap no. you? No, I don't. I don't have very much She's room in my kitchen. No, no, no. I had a roommate who wouldn't allow a microwave in the house because she was afraid it was going to cook her brain and her child's brain and her whatever, boy. whatever. No, whatever. if you stick your head in it, exactly. But although no, we don't let our kid like have her head anywhere near the microwave when <laughs> it's running, just in case. Okay. Yeah. So you just don't have enough room. Yeah, I don't have enough room, and. Um, I had kind of a phase where I felt like it was just really lazy mm-hmm. to have one. You're so a theorist. It is, it is very but, lazy. But, but then it makes I don't popcorn. eat leftovers very much because uh. it's hard to reheat them. I, I mean, I don't like leftovers well, so a do lot because do... of the texture change too, but... So one person... You know, we... there is some stuff that leftovers, yeah. lentil soup leftovers mm-hmm. are better than the original. A lot of soups are yeah. really good All, leftover. Um, most soups. Yeah. Um, cream of mushroom, like homemade cream mm-hmm. of mushroom soup, better. Uh, also... Gumbo, three days later, the most amazing thing on mm-hmm. the planet. Paella, sense, the yeah. next day. Paella. If you, if you haven't mm-hmm. finished it. Especially yeah. paella. So things with those complex spices that all mm-hmm. just kind of... Especially yeah, paella, because the, yeah. the saffron kind mm-hmm. of gets a chance to... I need, you know, some, kind of, I need some paella, doctor. I can do that. Okay. We still you. have peppers. Maybe Sunday you can make me paella. If you make me Spanish coffee, I'll make you paella. <laughs> and you've got a deal. All right. That's good. Yeah. I love making paella, and it's and once you get into it, it's easy. It it's actually, kind of like Spanish stir you know fry, what? right? It's all, I've done risotto a lot. I think that it's, works. It is a risotto. Similar, yeah. yeah, it's a risotto, but it's, it seems to turn out better With for paella, whatever reason. It's all prep work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although I want because I, I risotto scary because you end up with mush half the time. I do you? Yeah. If yeah. you don't do it right, yeah. I don't have that problem uh, so much. Really, you do you do well with yeah. the risotto? Yeah. Really? I, I think part of it's the kind of rice you pick. You have to pick a short yeah. grain or else uh-huh. it just won't work. The Arborio. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, or uh, yeah. I buy Calrose rice and I use that for well, okay. pretty much everything. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I am excellent at making rice. I'm, I am. When I met Dr. Normal, he had one of those rice makers mm-hmm. and he used it all the time and then it broke. And I said, okay, I'll make you rice until you get a new rice maker. Mm-hmm. We have now been married for... Well, let's see. We've been together for nine years. I don't know how long we've been married. How long have we been married? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. (laughs) Some amount of time. Tonight. We've been together for nine years. His his rice maker broke seven months into our relationship. He Uh still does not own a new rice maker because he has me, and I'm a rice maker. That's great. Good rice. I'm a coffee maker and a rice maker, apparently. Mm. So the problem that I have with rice, or you know, those kinds of things where like you boil it and then Mm -hmm. you cover it is if you totally forget what you're doing because, say, you were programming and then you put the stove... Or you, know, you were writing your blog post yeah, the yeah, next yeah. day or parenting you could burn or... burn rice a lot. Or burnt oatmeal has been my problem lately where, oh, yeah. you know, I, like I started in the morning Grits. and it's boiling and, yeah, and yeah. then you've got just this crust. Um, usually what happens with that is I hear the rice boil over and I run into the kitchen. Uh. But still, as long as you catch it when you first hear it boil over, you're okay. Apparently I'm not that perceptive. <laughs> It just, it just. Burns. I usually hear the sizzle and think, "Crap! I just cleaned the stove," and then run back in there. Yeah. So I set rules like you must stand here until the thing boils, yeah. even if it's boring. But the iPhone really helps with that. It does because you then know because you, can, stand you can just stand there and you have something to do. That's my thing when I make roux. If I'm making gumbo and you mm-hmm. have to stand there, and my mom has set forth all these rules about making roux. If you have a, you must have your. She drinks beer. You must have your beer 
mm-hmm. within arm's reach. Mm-hmm. I usually make myself a tiki drink. Um, you have to have your telephone in case you have to answer it, mm-hmm. and you have to have a glass of water, and every other distraction has to be, you know, if you have so a kid, just the kid has to be doing something, the husband has to be doing something, everything has to be out of your way, because you're not allowed to leave the stove. Mm-hmm. But that's a lot longer than it takes rice to boil. Yeah. So you mentioned the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Have you have you done any mobile development? No, I, mobile? I haven't. So you're the person in Portland that just the doesn't one person do in Portland. the mobile development. Oh, uh, I don't. It's not like categorically. I yeah. would never. No, I um I just haven't had time. You yeah. know, yeah. It, there's a lot of setup time, and so if there was, and there probably is, but if there was a really easy way to take Ruby code and then poof, I have an iPhone. There you go. Then. But um, if I want to do iPhone programming, then I need to learn Objective-C. And did if you, I want to do Android, then I need to learn Java. And did you uh, <laughs> follow the CES announcements this week? Uh, um, just kind of in the so third Palm, hand. So Palm Twitter came out with the, yeah. their finally their new device. The, mm-hmm. I think it's called the Pre. And then they have a cloud. And there's some kind of web OS, OS thing. That, and they're saying if you yeah. code you know, HTML, JavaScript, and all this stuff, you can write apps for their... Right. For their platform. But you can do like a mobile web app yeah, for the iPhone. Yeah. That's sure. pretty nicely integrated. Yeah, yeah. So. But mobile is probably, it's just interests you or just kind of... Mm. Well, I have an iPhone and yeah. I like having software on it that does stuff that I use. So if I hit something where I, like, I really wanted an application that did something and it did not seem to be coming out from anyone else, then that might be motivation. Is there something that's missing from your iPhone? does most of the things that I would really want it to do. Yes, it is mine. Yeah. I love I, my iPhone. You know, I, I'm really interested in, like, geographic integration and sort of weird... Um, Geolocation like, stuff. Yeah, well, like, you know, layering content on top of your physical location. Uh-huh. Um, and that that's a big thing. thing. I mean, like, in yeah. Portland, you know, a lot of people are are yeah. all about that. So, I, you know, I thought, well, having a, a really um, fluid browser for that kind of content would be pretty neat. But mm-hmm. it's just yeah. sort of a one of those idle, oh, you know, if I have free time. I'll... The browser is the one thing on my iPhone that I am not necessarily so content with, but it's also the thing I use the least. Yeah, but it's the best browser on a mobile platform. Correct. It is the best. <laughs> I give you that. It's the best it browser I mean, on I mobile. left the than... Palm platform because they didn't do anything with Blazor. I mean, it was a good browser back in mm-hmm. 2000 and, I don't know, one or two, but, you know. I pretty much check my email, do Twitter, and listen to music, and do calendar stuff on my iPhone, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and play games. You know Twitter, that. email. There's, there's certain web pages I leave open that I check. I have like three web pages open, mm-hmm. um, and usually it's because the Twitter interface is sometimes difficult. Although I just use that, what's the new, what's that Morgan showed me on Sunday? T- oh. The Twitter. Tweety. Tweety, because I you would always have to anytime I wanted to add someone on Twitter, I had to go to the the web page. Right, because you're not logged in from like Twitterific, you're not logged in. Well, you're logged you in, but it pages. won't it won't let you add followers or it won't let you follow somebody. Oh, and Tweety does. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Morgan. Tandy. Um, I love Tweety because I can do anything from Tweety, and not have to worry about going over to Safari. So that's yeah, nice. Yeah, I gotta try that. You paid for that, right? Yes, I did. I paid for it. I paid I a whole three dollars for it. <laughs> well, I, I saw. This tweet. is what I like about a lot of the mobile apps. They're so cheap. It's, you know, like if you the paid for not free. Ah. Uh, I, I'm such a, I, I didn't know, even I'm pay terrible. for my iPhone. My iPhone was a Christmas present in 2007. So I've had my I iPhone know. for a year, and I love it. My prediction it's is in 2009, the Chaos family will start paying for some mobile apps. Well, oh. also start paying and for we iTunes because we're getting rid of. I paid for my first mobile app, and we're. Mm-hmm gonna start paying for itunes because we're getting rid of cable oh my that's oh, right nice yeah and yeah. the music is now going drm free which means you can move the music mm-hmm. by the end of the first quarter of this year i think that was one of the biggest announcements I, I, css I mean, whatever oh here's a new tv wow whoop de do yeah but i think that was the big announcement at ces mm-hmm. was that i mean they said it was coming but they finally said by the end of you know this first quarter of 2009 that iTunes will be DRM free, which means you can move your music. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good thing. I'm glad that, that About you know, not, time, instead of right? just saying they'd like to do it, Apple actually. Well, we've it. never bought anything on iTunes, and no. that's one of the barriers. So when is they like, started offering those iTunes Plus 
deerium free ones. Yeah. I bought some of those. That's right. They they yeah. started doing this, but they're going to go entirely. Mm -hmm. The catalog is going to be entirely DR DRM free. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. So you could go buy an iTunes song and not be like, oh God, I can only play it on this computer or this iPhone or this yeah. crap. What a bunch Try of crap. Try to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's terrible. I mean, what if? Well, what if you hold on to your MP3s for ten years and then <laughs> there's nothing compatible exactly. that will play them? Which, well, especially if you're yeah. not buying the CDs and that's your music collection, and now mm -hmm. this is your music collection, so you're backing it up, moving it places. Yeah. You're gonna, it's gonna stay I with you. I still like it, even though we get our CDs and then we rip them and put them onto mm -hmm. our. Yeah, but the deal wait. is, you buy them over the air and you just download them via Wi-Fi. But there's something about something. like looking at the. I'm all nostalgic. I, I'm one of that one person. I buy most that, of my stuff. CDs yeah. and then rip it. Yeah. I want to clarify something right now. Dr. Normal is not an Apple fanboy. I just <laughs> want to not. clarify that. So, Cammy Cass the commercial you Apple. just heard for Apple and the iPhone. And it's, <laughs> it's just it's not, not representative. I, I will be more Dr. than happy Normal to whip out it. some anti Apple. Like the diatribe. four, there's five computers mm -hmm. in our house, I'm thinking. Is it five? I mean, Although I do want a MacBook. Do you yeah. count the phones? No, counting just the computers, I think we have five, and only one of them is a Mac. Is that yeah. an accurate count? Yeah, five. Am I right? Yeah, we have one. I don't know. We have computers Ish. coming out of our ears. We've got them cooked at the TV. You want a Pentium 2 with a uh, damn small Linux on it? I'll give it to you tonight. <laughs> we have two spare, halfway disassembled computers sitting Trying to get those over to right Free now. Geek for yeah. some At home, yeah. Why can't we just get a Will to come get them? Will. I know. Come over here on the bus. Even free and geek doesn't the want that technology. They're like, uh, and put them in your, you know, strap them to your back and hey, haul damn them over. small Linux boots on it. It was the yeah. distro I was looking yeah. for. Ubuntu wouldn't, but you know, mm -hmm. DSL will boot, boot on anything. <laughs> so. What are you gonna do? Oh wait, no, we've got more because your mom's old laptop up there too. Yeah, we're so on it. we mm -hmm. have a lot of computers because we're a geeky family, mm -hmm. and one of them is a Mac. Well, right. Your first Mac. It's my first Mac, and I will never, ever go back. I've never, never used a Mac. I used an Apple II as a, that was like kind of my first real computing platform was an Apple II mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for a little while, and then we got a PC clone, and mm -hmm. then that was it, and then it was all PC mm -hmm. from there on out. Um, so the iPhone was my first Apple Pro, true Apple product. Wow. The first Apple product that was ever brought yeah. into the house was my iPhone. I wanted it so much and so horribly but badly. That was enough to that get Dr. Over Normal any got Apple me one device. for my birthday. Or no, for Christmas. He got uh -huh. it for me for Christmas. He gave it to me on Christmas Eve. And then I think three months later he got his iPhone. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later I got my MacBook because yeah. my, my computer and so, died for a second. And so time. You, you were in college and you were in Linux, so you were on mm -hmm. PC architecture. Yeah. Right, and then you, and then after that, then you went. Well, moved but to Mac. before that, I had a Mac Classic. Um, oh, okay. That, that was sort of our family computer, yep. and then I yep. inherited it. Um, and you I didn't have it? a printer, huh? You still got it? No, I oh. I gave slash sold it to a friend sometime in college yeah. after transferring all my files off, which was an interesting process because um, there weren't a lot of things that were compatible <laughs> yeah i think i had to recompile my kernel so that it would read the mac fluffy disk that i put everything mm. <laughs> that's the one nice thing now is that you can at least have that it's the only i i because i'm so used to office microsoft office mm -hmm. we bought microsoft office for my mac oh. just because he, everything he does is in microsoft mm -hmm. and i was craving that compatibility mm -hmm. I like compatibility. He's looking at things. I just looked at the clock. Have we really been talking for an hour and after hours? Yes. It wow. seems like only a few minutes to me personally, though. <laughs> Since we got on I, the topic of sour. We've had a lot of production <laughs> issues in the backstage here. Yeah. It, that's One of what those vacation episodes does. where Dr. Normal would like to sit down and actually be part of the show. Three weeks of vacation wreaks havoc on the show. I wonder why. You'll just have to get back in the routine. Yeah. Everyone needs to get back into their routines, dang it. Audrey, I feel like we didn't have very long with you, even though you've been here. I'll come back. For hours, we'd love to have you yes, back. Yes, we'd we love to have you back. Absolutely love to have you Maybe back. Maybe in a less, less chaotic kind of a... <laughs> Maybe in an evening when you get here and I'm not like, just sit down and so, hold on. No spring break. Yes, yeah, spring break would be a bad time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It would be a very bad time. Okay. I'm taking spring break off of Strange of Live, everybody. Yes. I'm going on vacation Something. for spring break. We'll figure Something. it out. Maybe I'm going to go to Tahiti. That you would never be nice. know. 
thank you for coming. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. And tomorrow. join us next. Oh, tomorrow is uh, end bloglessness. Please, please end bloglessness. Tomorrow from noon, noon to, to five, five at Cube, Cube Space. Space. Put on by beer and blog. Please join us. I'm going to be there um, trying to absorb knowledge and trying to help those with less knowledge than I have. Join us next week with Steph Drickland and Aaron Weiss. That's right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.